Okay, guys. So, again, and sorry for being twice up here. So, okay. Uh, who am I? Again, Marco Oliveira. I'm the CTO of Baboom Limited. As uh, João pointed out, um, it's the music platform uh, envisioned by Kim.com. Um, I'm the Indie United co-founder, which is a, a open source uh, software initiative. Uh, also, OpenJS founder, overall open source advocate, and I've been developing for the web for the past 10 years. Uh, my, my experience first started, uh, as everyone, with HTML websites. Uh, my first website was a Pokemon website. Uh, I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, then I moved on to, to Flash, which, which is an awesome technology. Uh, and then I moved on to PHP, and now uh, using JS and Node.js. Uh, first of all, uh, who in here has developed for the web? Fantastic. My work here is done. Thank you. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, really. Uh, OK, my talk is Web Matters. Um, it is a wordplay between a bunch of matters about JavaScript and, and the web overall, and um, why the web matters. Uh, when people ask me what I do, and I say, yeah, I develop for the web, um, this is what my colleagues think I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is what my parents think I do, and this is what I really do. I know, awesome, awesome right? Uh, but yet, uh, people, or at least lots of people, say, ah, web development sucks. Um, it is over, uh, overall seen as a, um, a lower class of um, software development. Just the, the other day, not really the other day, like three months ago, a friend of mine asked me, hey, what are you doing now? And I said, yeah, I'm developing for the web again. And he was like, ah, that's cool, but I prefer, prefer developing real software. <laughs> what? True story, really. Uh, but this, this got me thinking. This, this is a, a type of um, uh, mentality that you see in, in a lot of people. And it, this got me thinking, what is real software? Um, I will call it um, web or non-web, because real software really, uh, I feel the pain. Uh, and what's the difference? Is, is it because it's not inside the browser? Maybe, I, I, it got me thinking, maybe it's developing desktop applications, maybe it's developing uh, mobile applications, maybe it's controlling awesome robots. I'll try to play the, the video. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that guy. Okay, it's flying a robot. Maybe it's that. No. Or maybe it's developing uh, mm. Maybe it's, it's developing high-performance games. Maybe it's that. Okay. Well, maybe not really. Uh, what's all, of, all of those that software that you just saw has in common is, is that it was developed using web technologies. Uh, it used Node WebKit, PhoneGap, uh, Node.js, and WebGL. So this is the stigmata. And it, it, I think it mainly comes uh, from something that most of us were taught in, in, uh, in college, which is uh, compiled is faster. Compiled is faster, and it's always faster. So why would you use uh, uh, an interpreted language? That is true most of the times, but it also doesn't matter most of the times. Um, the, the, the real reality is that programmers are not perfect and if you give them complicated tools they'll they'll create complicated software that many times doesn't work and people don't know why uh, on the other hand most software that we develop does not does not need to be that fast and still web technologies are actually fast maybe not as fast but still good also another problem I, I already uh, pointed out uh, Maintainability of the code is really important, especially for, for big companies. Companies like PayPal, eBay, LinkedIn, Walmart, and many others, I'm sure you all know, use web technologies for all kinds of things. I'm not saying they, they use strictly web technologies for everything, but they use it a lot. And if it's good enough for them, it's probably good, as, good enough for you. Also, as Andre uh, pointed out, um, 
performance is an abstract co concept. Uh, it involves several metrics. It involves raw performance, it involves development time, licensing, security, resilience, maintainability, and many others depending on your project. And still, some people don't know this, but, but most software, even non-web software, relies on web technologies. Just look at JSON and REST APIs. That's web. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, throughout time, uh, the web has evolved, of course. And there was a time where, in which uh, some, some technologies, or most web technologies, really sucked. But uh, now you can really develop what you would consider real software in, in web technologies. Just look at Facebook, Twitter, and Baboom, of course. Uh, it is easy and fast to deploy, I'm sure uh, you all know. Uh, no need to install, just visit the website, which is great. It is cross-platform, at least almost, if you don't <laughs> consider the browsers. Uh, and the interaction and the design is completely different. The experience that, that users have is completely different from that they usually have on uh, stuff that was developed natively. Uh, all of this is really, really neat, but it also brings a danger, which is your, your application can become, uh, become awesome. And although that's awesome, it can be a problem because then you will probably face, or you, you might face uh, something that most uh, non-web applications do, do never face, which is scale. Um, most non-web uh, software runs on a single machine. I'm not saying uh, some don't, but yeah. Um, the web is not like that. You, most times you have many machines with even more clients or users. Applications can grow really fast, and this is the time for shine for software architects. Basically, pay, uh, when, you're, you're a, when your service or your application really needs to grow, uh, the commit, commitments and the, the, the um, and the quality of the, the your software will will dictate if your application um, succeeds or breaks. Basically, also the web has been because of all of this that I'm saying has been the driving force for many awesome technologies. I'm probably some of you have used technologies like NoSQL. Uh, full text uh, search engines. I'm not saying that other applications don't, don't use it, but mainly this, this came because of the web and because of the scale that the, the web brought, and web servers and caching servers. Also, um, and because this is OpenJS, and I'm not here just to talk about the web, I'm also going to talk about JavaScript. Um, we, of course, have to, to talk about the, the lingua franca of the web, which is JavaScript. And first of all, this is a disclaimer, I was not always a JavaScript fan uh, for the same reasons that I just mentioned. Um, it is typically associated with poorly written code. Uh, you have strange uh, variable scope. And sorry for reading a list today, but it was a, a really complicated day for me. Uh, you have spaghetti code, callback hell. Uh, you can mess with the prototypes of native objects, which is awesome. Thank you for doing that. And it, it has lots of what the Fs. I don't know what the F is, uh, but it's really a neat site. You should check it. It has uh, really great pearls uh, of JavaScript, but still, it has its bad parts, but it, it also has its good parts. It is very expressive, not verbose. It, it allows for uh, asynchronous uh, thinking and writing, and all of these uh, characteristics make it... Uh, um, uh, and also, of course, it is the, the lingua franca of, of the web. You have it in all browsers. Uh, this makes it uh, an ideal um, language to have all around. This even uh, brought, brought us what's called Atwood's Law, which is any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. You can see just, just now you saw Unreal Tournament running on a browser, which probably wouldn't make any sense like 10 years ago. It is running on a browser. In, and in JavaScript. All of this, enter Node.js. Um, uh, uh, Node.js, for those of you who don't know, first of all, who knows Node.js? Oh my god. <laughs> so no need to explain. Uh, I will just jump this. It's really cool. Uh, 
Okay, so basically, uh, for those of you who are not very familiar with, with Node.js, it is basically uh, running JavaScript on your server. It has a, a event-driven um, architecture. You, your code r runs in a single thread, and it's really simple to, to do parallel tasks because Node takes, a, takes care of all the I.O. in separate threads. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, nice. Um, I said it all. <laughs> okay, so I'll, 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 all of this to, to, to tell you, uh, and sorry, I, I think I rushed my, my uh, presentation. Um, all of this to tell you that um, JavaScript is a really neat technology, and I'm really happy. I, I actually did not expect so many people to be so familiar with Node.js. Um, JavaScript is like a, a technology, technology that allows you to really quickly create something really cool. And this is something that me as a developer, uh, I didn't, I haven't felt it for, for a while. Uh, I was mainly a PHP developer um, for the last five to six years, I would say. Uh, I discovered Node.js two, two years ago, and from that time uh, on, uh, I started using it uh, on a daily basis because I could get most of the, the work that I needed to do really fast, and it, it actually performed much faster than anything else that I used to, to use. Again, PHP, most of the, the, the code um, was developed in a blocking uh, model, which really sucks if you are working on, uh, on the web 2.0, which means you will be consuming a lot of services, using databases and da da da, and it, it gets really slow. With Node.js, uh, it was really cool for me. Um, and to prove to you that you can develop really neat things with, uh, with JavaScript and Node.js, I would like to take you guys outside and uh, try out something that I, I find really cool. Uh, I won't be able to de demonstrate it all. Um, I just changed my laptop and I don't have it all here. I'm really sorry for that, but I think it will be st neat still. Okay. Okay, uh, okay guys, um, I considered uh, showing you the code, uh, but I thought, I thought the, the screen was really small and, and it didn't really matter. Uh, I'll just explain you what, what happened here. Uh, so basically I bought um, a Parrot AR Drone 2.0 um, and I wanted to hack something with it. Ho uh, hopefully it, it has uh, an open, somewhat open protocol and one guy, Felix, already developed um, a module to control the, the quadcopter. Uh, it has a pretty straightforward interface, and, but I wanted to do it in some cool way. It, th these devices usually are controlled using a, a phone or a, a tablet, which is not really uh, too comfortable. You don't, have, you don't get a real feel for what you are doing. So I had one of these at, at home, and it's really old. Um, so I wondered if, if I could connect this thing to, to my computer and get something out of it and connect, connect it to my, my quadcopter. Fortunately, it's, it worked, yeah. Um, I, I, got, I spent like two days hacking this thing, um, getting to know the, the protocol, um, and then I quickly mapped the, the interface I built to the interface of the quadcopter. This hack is actually bigger than what I'm going to show you, but I, I, again, I just switched laptop and I'm getting uh, trouble with FFmpeg for some reason. Um, the, the complete hack basically would go around and I would connect to the, to the Twitter pipe and when you hashtag OppoJS, I would get a picture of you and tweet it back to you. Uh, but no can do. I will fly it though. It's really neat. And again, it, it took me like two days to, to do this, and that's, I think, the, the real magic of using Node, which is really simple. It, you always find something to do whatever you are doing, and if, if it doesn't exist already, uh, it's really quick to do it. That's, that's the magic, I think. And, <laughs> and disclaimer, if, if the thing goes after you, <laughs> protect yourself. <laughs> really, it happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, really? Really? Yeah, yeah. What, this one time uh, I, I was with, with Joao actually near the road and I, I got him to fly and suddenly he got like and uh, I only had time to, to shut it off and it fell from a height 
I don't know, maybe 10 meters, something like that. Uh, no one got injured, but again, protect yourselves. Problem of no, of course. It's, it's, it's his fault. Um, well, well. I hope you you have enjoyed uh, enjoyed my, my presentation. Again, what, what I wanted to, to to leave with you is not that JavaScript and Node.js and web technologies should be used all the all the time to solve everything. It's not about that. But you definitely should not uh, put them aside just because someone considers it a uh, lower class of development. There are some really neat. Uh, tools out there, uh, JavaScript and, and uh, Node.js included, and if you think it is the right fit for you, you should definitely use it. Okay, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.